Hey friends, how's it going? I want to share a quick testimony. Actually, it's my story in short form. And uh, some of you may know this, some of you don't. But at, uh, at an early age, my teen years, I was a drug addict and an alcoholic. I had uh, started off as a social thing, and then it really got the best of me. By the age of 18, I'd been in and out of jail many a times, in and out of rehabs. And uh, I tried hard drugs actually off at a rehab, and I came out of that treatment center more addicted than I, than I went in. And it was just horrible. It destroyed my life. Everything I touched exploded. It was just, it was really, it was really bad, you know, and um, I can't play it cool like I was some sort of functioning addict or something that I was not functioning at all. And I literally destroyed every relationship, everything, every door that opened that could have been good. Um, I messed it up and it was because I was addicted. It was because I was bound in chains and I needed Jesus. And uh, so uh, over a series of events, I ended up in Texas, uh, living in Austin, Texas on the streets, staying in the Salvation Armies and, and such and um, became suicidal, ended up back in Georgia by way of my father, actually flew out there because he found out where I lived. He flew out there and he drove me back to Georgia. But, you know, changing locations didn't change my situation. It, it just changed locations. And I brought all that horrible stuff with me to Georgia. Got a lot worse. A few weeks later, I overdosed. And uh, the EMT driver, he was a compassionate guy, believer in Jesus. He did more than just saw another guy overdose that I got to get to the hospital. He actually, he saw a soul. He saw a son. He saw a f a friend. Um, he saw someone worth investing some more into, and he actually reached out to my family, and he said, man, I, I know um, a place where Bobby can go. I know some people I need to get him in touch with. They can help Bobby, and so, man, I'm so grateful for this EMT driver that went beyond his job description to be a part of the solution. That's amazing just to think about that. Um, he had such a short time span of involvement in my life, but it was such a big step all at once. That's how sometimes God works that way, man. But so anyway, uh, he introduced us to my wife's father who ran a rehab center um, outside of town. And um, I went out and long story short, I got saved at this rehab filled with the Holy Spirit. I was taught to go to my bedroom and seek the Lord and find out who he is. And, and finding him, I will actually find what my identity is in Christ. And uh, I was taught about the power of God and the promise of God. I was just taught that it was greater than I had ever heard in any church or any other story. I, it, was, it was greater than I knew. That I would actually be marked by heaven with the Holy Spirit walking with him, the fullness of God living on the inside of me to empower me to overcome my struggles and also share his good news and be a witness. And so uh, when, I, when I came to understand the, the beauty and power of the gospel, um, man, I was, I was done. I no turning back. And I remember one night I was actually uh, really messed up and um, they came to rescue me in this parking lot and we had some tussles and stuff. Um, the ministry team and me, and and I didn't want to surrender. I didn't want to be done. I didn't know I wanted to be done. And um, Hannah's dad actually reached in for a hug in the middle of me just being enraged and under the influence. And somewhere in that hug, um, I actually returned the hug instead of fighting it. And that was when the power of God, the presence of God filled my being um, and I remember all the rage and chaos and unsettledness that was inside. And that moment when I said, I'm returning this hug, and I returned it, it all went away. And the presence and the peace of God just completely saturated my being. Everything that I was, was different from that moment on. You know, and I didn't do it perfect from then on. I, I would love to tell that story. But that's just not my story. There were many times where I made mistakes. I took my will back. I had these things, but it was all a process. 
and I finally came to the place where I was completely done, completely surrendered to God. And it's been some 12 years since I've had a drink or any substance at all. I've been set free from addiction completely. Uh, I've been given and filled the, with the Holy Spirit. And uh, man, life is about Jesus for me. Life is about promoting him, uh, making his name famous, seeing people come into the same level of freedom and identity and fulfillment as I have through my walk with Jesus. And uh, in that whole process of being in that program um, and with that ministry, uh, I met Hannah, my beautiful bride. And uh, she was a part of that growth. It's really cool because she'll tell the story sometimes that she helped walk me into freedom from addiction, but I kind of helped her walk into the freedom of expression and music and art and worship and things. And uh, just really celebrated the sound and the beauty that I saw coming out of her in a way that maybe had not been done before. And she stepped deeper into that creative expression of who she is through our friendship and relationship. And we were best friends for over 10 years uh, in ministry together. Um, after I got clean and, and was set free, I didn't want to just go get my life back, but I decided to give my life to the ministry and be a part of that and uh, really serve the solution. You know, and so when we find out what works for us, it's best, it's, it's amazing to serve that solution um, at least for some time, if not for the rest of your life, you know. And uh, so I did that. And then um, in 2017, Hannah and I kind of branched out into Boha Tribe. And um, we decided we wanted to get married and travel the two of us as the duo, um, loving on people, continuing the mission of music and love and Jesus and revival. And so we did. We got married in 2018. Beautiful, amazing time. We bought a vintage Airstream bus and restored it as we led up to our uh, wedding. The day after our wedding, we took off on the Breaking Bread wedding tour, which was a tour that was not just made up of platforms and events, but it was also made up of times around the table with friends, the Breaking Bread tour, because we found that relationship and friendship and breaking bread with one another was uh, just as important as any stage any event, any um, anything else that we can do that. If we can sit across the dinner table and share stories and hope and get to know one another, that we're actually making disciples that way. That Jesus actually had the original discipleship program um, in that he made friends with his disciples, that he lived with them, ate with them, prayed with them, traveled with them, and so we find that is one of the greatest things that uh, we've learned is that uh, by making friends, we're making disciples. And that's kind of our mission when we go to the native reservations. It's not really a strategy. It's actually just doing life with people, learning them, being vulnerable for them to learn you and, uh, and doing life together as friends. And uh, so it's amazing. So look, God, he's working He's still working today. Whatever your need is, whatever your struggle is, he is ready. He's available. He's willing. He's just saying, come to me. Come to me. I'll give you rest. Come to me for my yoke is easy. My burden is light. And uh, he literally wants to give thirsty people a river on the inside of them. He makes thirsty people become rivers of God. We are as rivers of the living God on earth. And we release that water, that living water, that hope, that love, that healing, all those things through our life lived, not just what we do behind a podium or on a stage or at a church, but everywhere we go, we release the living water of Yahweh. We release the living water of Jesus into those places and rivers spring up in deserts. Isn't that cool? That's, uh, that's what we're called to. So that's my testimony. And uh, it's still being written today. I'm excited of what's to come. You know, continue to follow our journey and be with us and reach out to us. 
and we'd love to pray with you and get to know you. So bless you. I hope that inspired you. Thanks.